um, I I want to share with us, yeah, as I as I shared last month on walking walking in God's love that is based on Ephesians chapter five, all right, we, which actually talk about being imitators of God. If you if you see Ephesians chapter five, let us just go to Ephesians chapter five. This morning we have to hold our Bible uh, uh, in Ephesians chapter five because that is where my sermon or my sharing this morning will be. All right. So verse one to seven actually talks about walking by being imitators of God. And and the, the this is the letter to the Ephesians church or the Ephesians Christians. And Apostle Paul wrote in um, Ephesians chapter five, verse one, he says, therefore, be imitators of God, right? Walk in love, meaning this whole, actually this whole chapter is talking about being imitators of God. And how do we be, uh, 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 how, or how do we imitate God is by walking in love, walking in light, and walking in wisdom, all right? So I've, I've talked about, I have talked about walking in love last month. So now, today, we're going into walking in light so my sermon this morning is in the light of god all right uh edu let me know if i'm going too fast all right <laughs> uh we have another half an hour okay i won't keep a long chair all right now that is paul's overall command uh, for this section of scriptures that is being imitators of god and, and as i mentioned he gave three ways for christian on how to be imitators of god all right so so we have seen that walk in love walk in light and walk in wisdom so let us read about walking in light in ephesians chapter 5 verse 8 to 14. allow me to read that to us Walk in light, for you were once darkness, but now you are light in the Lord. Walk as children of light, for the fruit of the Spirit is all goodness, righteousness, and truth, finding out what is acceptable to the Lord. And have no fellowship with the unfruitful works of darkness, but rather expose them, for it is shameful even to speak of those things which are done by them in secret. But all things that are exposed are made manifest by the light for whatever makes manifest is light therefore he says awake you who sleep arise from the death and Christ will give you light amen amen that verse is very powerful and I say that every single verses that I read to us right every verse in the Bible is powerful and it's amazing you know and it's just you know, we just need to take time to appreciate them or to, you know, indulge ourselves in the word of God. Yeah. And so this verse 8 to 14 talks about uh, uh, walking in the light of God. All right. So the men in Jesus day. Yeah, they were required to go to Jerusalem three times a year to celebrate the great three feasts. All right. Number one, that is the Feast of Unleavened Bread, the Feast of Harvest, that is the second uh, feast. And the third harvest is the Feast of Ingathering, uh, also known as the Feast of Boots or the Feast of Tabernacles. We can read all this in Exodus chapter 23. All right. Now, why do I share this with us? Because the feast of um, uh, in gathering, they took place somewhere around mid October uh, and lasted for seven days. All right. So the people of God, they will camp in shelters or in tents. They'll be cam camping outside of Jerusalem in the open fields. Yeah. Outside of the city of Jerusalem. And it is actually a reminder of the wilderness wandering of the people of God, right? So that is why they are called the, the Feast of Boots. Yeah, they will be camping outside of the cities of Jerusalem, all right? And during the second year of Jesus' ministry, he was in Jerusalem for the Feast of Ingathering. And the morning after, right jesus spoke to a great crowd of people and proclaimed uh, in john chapter 8 verse 12 he says when jesus spoke again to the people he said i am the light of the world whoever follows me will never walk in darkness but will have the light of life and the light of life is jesus jesus is the light of the world 
yeah and it is the truth that we must keep uh, uh keep that in our mind yeah as we study today's text that is ephesians chapter 5 verse 8 to 14 yeah P apostle paul calls christians to be imitators of god so we imitate god today by walking in light all right let us let us just break it down i'll give us three points this morning that teaches us to walk in light all right number one walk in light by exhibiting light that is from verse 8 to verse 10. So that is the first thing on how we walk in light. That is by exhibiting light. In verse 8, Paul said, For you were once darkness, but now you are light in the Lord. Right? He says, in the Lord. And you know, this letter, when Paul was writing, he was actually writing to the believers. Uh, uh, of the Ephesians at uh, the Ephesus, the Church of Ephesus, all right. And prior to their um, uh, salvation, before they were saved, they were in darkness. And that is the same with all of us here. No difference. Before we are saved, we were in darkness, all right. But when they follow and when they accept Christ as their salvation, they are now light in the lord all right and, and see uh dr donald gray barnhouse wow that's a great name a uh, master of illustration he explained it this way all right uh, when christ was in the world he was like the shining sun okay when the sun sets the moon comes up and the moon is a picture of us that is the christian that is the believers all right uh, of the church so the church shines but not with its own light, right? I'm teaching a science today, church, even though I'm bad at it. Okay, it shines with reflected light, all right? The sun reflects its light, yeah, on the moon, and, and, and we don't shine by ourselves, amen? Our light does not originate with us, but Paul suggests that believers are, are more than a reflection of the light of Christ, all right? We actually become light ourselves. Yeah, you read verse 8 again. It says, for you were once darkness, but now you are light. Where? In the Lord. So we are light in the Lord. We will not have light if we are not in the Lord, all right? Because God is our light. The, the, the light originates from him. And so his light reflects. And, and now as he reflects, as we walk our life in Christ, we become light ourselves, all right? So it is because of our relationship or because of our union with Christ, uh, uh, Paul commands uh, uh, all the believers in verse 8 later that he says, walk as children of light. Isn't it amazing, church? Yeah? To walk as children of light. Yeah? So just as Jesus is the light of the world, we Christians or we sons and daughters of his are to walk as he walked, and that is as lights of the world. And in fact, actually, in, in the Sermon of the Mount, in Matthew chapter 5, verse 14, Jesus said to his followers, he said, you are the light of the world. A city that is set on a hill cannot be hidden. That means no matter what, no matter how far, or no matter what is trying to cover you, you will never be hidden because you are the light of God. You know how some people... Um, uh, some people will come up to you or maybe you've seen other people, you know, they just shine, you know, we're, we're, you know, there's no light, but they just shine and, and you kind of see like a ray of light around them. And, you know, my, my father, Pastor Carlo, he had that kind of um, experience, that testimony where people come up to him after service. They said, Pastor, I saw a lion behind you. I saw light behind you. And I saw this big giant guy behind you. And that is Jesus. They don't know that, right? They don't know that, but their eyes were just opened by God and they just see all this. God let them see all these things, you know? And it is such a wonderful experience, you know? And I hope all of us will be able to reach that level, be able to reach that place where people will just see us and we just, you know, shine. 
shine, all right? So, but exactly what way are believers light? And Paul described the characteristics of light in verse 9. He says, for the fruit of the Spirit is in all goodness, righteousness, and truth. The phrase, um, the fruit of the Spirit, it describes the result of the union with Christ or the results, the fruit of our relationship with Christ. Because Christ, who is God, He is good, He is right, and He is true. Amen? So we, as His imitators, Christians, we need to do what is good, what is right, and what is true. All right, and in order um, to encourage other believers or our friends that we are trying to encourage to share the word of God, to walk in light by exhibiting light, you know, Paul said in verse 10, he says, finding out what is acceptable to the Lord. Yeah, in other words, Christians must exhibit or we must show or we must know what is good, what is right, and what is true. And they, you know, it will give uh, verification or evidence that they are who they claim to be or we are who we claim to be and that is the children of God and, and, and of light all right so so shine your light church yeah never be ashamed in in the uh, 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 declaring or proclaiming that that you are a Christian yeah a Christian is just a term for us Christ followers but we are actually the sons and daughters of God we are his children we are walking in his light and you know Christian is just a, a, a term if you're not living right with God yeah you can claim yourself to be a Christian yeah you can claim yourself to be uh, yeah on papers you can claim to be a Christian but if you're not walking exactly on what God has asked us to you know we are merely just you know Christian by name we're not really children or we're not really sons and daughter of his. No, we're not proudly proclaiming, you know? And, and I, I used to be um, shy about, you know, saying that I'm a Christian whenever I go out when I was younger, right? When, when people ask me, so what is your religion? Or whenever they see that I'm wearing a cross, they said, oh, you're a Christian. And I would shy away and I'm like, yeah, yeah, my father is a pastor, so naturally I'm a Christian. You know, that's, that's what I, I grow up with. That's, how, that's what I grew up with. And, you know, naturally, it is actually naturally because your father is a pastor. You're, you're, you're staying in the house where, where your father and your mom is, is a pastor and naturally you become a Christian. But actually, um, not all pastor's kid are, are, are Christians. How should I put this? Uh, <laughs> they're, they're, you know, some, you know, there are Christians out there that, claim pastor pastor's kid are the worst pastor's kid are our rebellion pastor's kid are this and that this and that and you know actually it is true because just because they are born in a christian family just because they are born under a pastor who works full-time ministry you know naturally they're a christian no you know it is up to us as an individual you know even though your, your, your parents is pastor, but it is about your life. Your parents cannot help you to be a Christian. Your parents can only guide you to the path that God has prepared. But it is up to us to receive, to accept, and, and to see who we are in God. So I, I pray and I hope all other um Pastor's kid outside, they called P PK's kid, right? PK's kid. I, I hope all the PK's out there, you know, you, you see who you are not because of your parents. You see who you are yourself in God and according to his word, all right? And I'm dragging us. Let us go. Um, walk in light by exposing darkness. That is my second point this morning. That is from verse 11 to verse 14. It says, and we have no fellowship with the unfruitful works of darkness, but rather expose them. All right. And that is the echo of what Paul actually wrote in verse three. Yeah, just up there. It says, but fornication and all uncleanness or covetousness, let it not be named among you as is fitting for saints. Yeah. And this view is also strengthened uh, back up by what Paul said in verse 12. He says, for it is shameful even to speak of those things which are done by them in 
secrets and that is why we hear so many sermons so many sharing or preaching by pastors out there that our life in private matters more than our outside yeah than what we show to other people outside yeah so what unbelievers do is darkness and we christians we christ followers must not do what they formerly did or what our old man has done that is why we when we accept christ our old man has passed and the new one is born again all right so uh, uh not uh, you know nor must christian uh take part in any way of unfruitful works of darkness we must also expose them yeah we must expose the the the, the dirty works of the enemy right but how are christians to do that how are we you know so you know so little kind of people to do these things to expose all this darkness you know how do we take no part at all in this unfruitful works uh, but also yet we are still able to expose them we can do that simply by our presence did you know that your presence is very powerful my brothers and sisters our presence is very powerful because we are representing God. We are walking in his light. You know, that is why we need to uh, um, be careful of what we say or, or how we walk or how we talk or whatever it is, how we do things. We need to be careful because we are representing God. We are his example. Yeah, we cannot be encouraging people to be Christian and yet we are living in another life. We have another life other than this all right so so we must you know we we can we can expose the darkness simply by our presence and and other times we can also speak up our voice our mouth is also very powerful amen so when when we hear unbelievers say things that are contrary to what god's word is you know it is you know it is right for us or it is appropriate to correct them yeah and to explain god's word to them they are saying all these things because they don't read the bible they don't know the truth they don't know what is right and so they are saying whatever that uh based on whatever they hear based on whatever they see on the internet right based on whatever they believe you know so they don't know the word of god and so they will say all these things and, and it is, you know, for example, it is common for, um, for us to hear uh, outside, right? When people say, oh my God, yeah, I, I, would, I change that. I would say, oh my gosh, right? I would say, oh, oh my God, you know, we put a little, you know, slang to that because we don't want to use God's name in vain. Or we hear people or American TV show, they said, for Christ's sake, right? For Christ's sake, all right? So, you know, we can remind them that they are violating the third commandment, you know, that is not to take the Lord's name in vain. That is in Exodus chapter 20, verse 7. All right. So our resource or our resources for exposing the unfruitful works of darkness is the word of God. We can always correct them. We can always uh, uh, um, remind them or teach them by using the word of God. Amen amen and in uh, the this in psalms the psalmist said in psalms chapter 119 verse 105 he says your word is a lamp to my feet and a light to my path you know i am pretty sure a lot of uh, uh memory verse uh, uh people out there you know memorize this verse right your word is a lamp to my feet and a light to my path and that is why in verse 13 to 14 paul said but all things that are exposed are made manifest by the light for whatever makes manifest in light uh, for whatever makes manifest is light therefore he says awake you who sleep arise from the dead and christ will give you light and that is what christians are called to do today yeah we as light we need to expose the darkness yeah not just to you know to 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 do like exorcism and to bring out the devil from the person but you know you can always expose the darkness or you can always uh, uh, um break all these unfruitful works by just you know telling people reminding them teaching them the word of god right it is that simple now i experienced that uh back in high school you know how we uh kids 
Che, kids, young people, I'm still young, uh, <laughs> high schoolers back then, <laughs> I'm talking as if I'm over uh, 40, 50. Um, so we, we young uh, high schoolers, you know, my Malay friends or Chinese friends, Indian friends, all of them will come to me and ask about Christian things and we also exchange information. You know, it is so um, fascinating sometimes how they know things more than we do you know they were saying that oh christian do they do this do they do that and i was like what is that you know they say they read on the internet they hear this they hear that and you know i i i i am so blessed that i have the opportunity to actually tell them according to what the word of god is even though at that time i may not be an expert even now also actually we are still learning but whatever that we know based on the word of god we can always teach them amen yeah so we are to walk in light by exposing darkness and, and that is why it is so important for christians to know the word of god yeah it is important you know if you don't know the word of god but you want to expose the darkness you know whenever you say genesis 1 1 for god to love the world the devil will beat you to that genesis 1 1 is in the beginning <laughs> you know the devil knows the word of god don't forget that church all right so we need to know our bible we need to know god's word yeah and it is only the light of god that is the word of god expose the darkness all right now my point number three and that is the final point actually going fast we walk in light by exhorting unbelievers that is in verse 14 yeah paul said in verse 14 therefore he says awake you who sleep arise from the death and christ will give you light you see all sleeper describes every unbeliever who walks in darkness all right and, and, and produce they they produce the unfruitful works of darkness so they are unaware of their conditioned or or their uh, tragic identity you know because they are walking in darkness and that is why we as christian who are called to walk in light we must exhort them to awake yeah to wake them up sort of like an alarm clock to them to wake them up from this darkness all right arise from the dead that is the exhortation to repent all right when we as un oh, sorry when unbelievers when they are walking in darkness they are living their sinful life right so so we need to bring them back or we need to exhort them to repent before the lord all right because you know the, the it is um the unbeliever you know we need to do that so that we can call the unbeliever to turn their ways from the death ways of sin right so we we you know don't just uh, live your life happily or you know comfortably as a christian or as a follower of christ and while while seeing others seeing people that we know who don't know god you know living their miserable life we need to encourage them and bring them back to god's way right so so if we are not yet a believer of christ today you know i exhort you today to awake O sleeper right and arise from the death and christ will shine on you amen that is why there are some uh christians out there they are wondering like how do you shine you know when they see people shining there's like you know how did, how is there a light behind you and that is god light shining amen you know i heard so many and i shared this before so many people from uh um our back home or saba whenever they see my parents they're like you guys just never grow old you know what do you take what do you eat and my parents are like oh we just uh, wash our face with the sabun buku you know <laughs> the <laughs> sabun buku right the, the soap just a normal soap you know my my mom she don't use any face cleanser, um, makeup remover, and her face just stay flawless. Wow, you know, the, the blood, you know, very strong. And people just say, you guys just never grow old. And I, honestly, when I look back on pictures, right, when I see my parents' picture from last time, they really don't, 
they barely grow old, you know, like their, their face. Maybe they, their hair grow grayer, yes. But, you know, they just don't look any uh, 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 older than what they used to look before. Except the hair grow thinner, you know, some wrinkles here and there. But <laughs> they, they look the same, you know. So people are just, you know, wondering. And, and, you know, my parents sometimes, they are proud of that. We can always be proud of that church. Don't be ashamed. Don't be shy. When people compliment you, just say thank you and accept that, right? I'm trying to practice that, you know. Kakak Lisa compliment me this morning and I was like, no. Oh. <laughs> I was like, yeah, yeah, thank you. But, um, you know, my, my parents, when they, they feel proud, they just say it's because of the light of God. It's because I'm living in God and God is living in me. You know, and it is so powerful to just uh, claim that, to share that with people outside because that encouraged them to continue to live their life, right? And, and I, I'm also um, encouraged by how they live, how they lead their life and how people are always blessed by them, by their presence. And, you know, it's just so wonderful to see how God used them. And, you know, they just live and God just shine their light and people are just, you know, like, where's this light coming from? Yeah, you know, to be dramatic. But um, yes, Christ will shine on you if you walk in him. All right? So this morning, I just want to close us with this, right? As we analyze, as we, have, as we have analyzed on how to be imitators of God or how to walk in God, you know, and today we uh, see this scripture from verse 8 to 14. It says, walk in light. And so we church... We, as Christians, as God's children, we must walk in light. That is the main thing here this morning, walk in light. I cannot help you. Uh, um, I cannot help you to walk in light if you yourself are not, don't, don't want to. Because I'm just here uh, as God's instrument to encourage us, to remind us, and to share with us how to walk in light. And I hope and I pray this morning we've learned that right by by exhibiting light by exposing the darkness by exhorting the unbelievers and and you know uh we need to make commitments to do that every day so as to reflect god's light in us there is light in us church if you don't know you can see it no. <laughs> there is there is life in us because we live in god and he lives in us and it is up to us to just turn on that switch and to just let it shine amen in proverbs chapter 4 verse 18 it says but the path of the just is like the shining sun that shines ever brighter upon the perfect day amen i hope we can be like this um, shining sun you know that that just shines brighter than before you know it is never too late for us church if you think that um you have age or that you are older now you know it's never too late actually age uh, doesn't matter right when you want to shine for god you will always do what god asks you to do if you do want to shine for god you'll continue his work you will continue to give his praises you know and 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 you know it is just up to us actually it is a decision that we must make because just being a Christian like that, that is just based on name, based on paper, based on the fact that we need to have a religion. Yeah, it is, it is just a decision for us, uh, you know, whether we want to take up this call, whether we want to shine for God. Yeah, we can always be a Christian anytime. But shining for God is a different thing. Shining for God is another thing, actually. You know, that, that, you know, shining for God is beautiful, you know. And when, you know, you are a, um, a walking example or a walking testimony, a living testimony for others. That is how God, you know, that is what he wants us to do, actually. When we spread the word of God, when we share um, the word of God, you know, even if you don't say anything about the Bible, when people look at you because you are shining, you know, they will be encouraged to just open their mouth and to just ask questions. You know, it is that simple, church. Amen. And I, I hope that every one of us, you know, we will profess this faith in Jesus Christ, which is the light of the world. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Let us pray. Hallelujah. I, can, can we just stand? This morning as we close in prayer, 
You know, it is just beautiful to see how God is working in us, you know, and, and you might not see it, you might not realize it, but God is actually working in us. If you think that God is, you know, stop working, you know, he actually not. He continues to work no matter how uh, 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 or what situation we are in. He is always working. His hands is always on our life. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Let us pray. Father, we thank you, Lord, uh, for this beautiful morning. God, we thank you for your grace, for your love and your mercy upon our life. Father, we just want to thank you as we read your word this morning, Father, to walk as children in light, Lord God. Lord, we pray that this word, your word this morning will, will sit in our life, Father God, and it will uh, lead us to be a guidance, Father God, in our life, Jesus, as we walk and as we become your light in this world father lord we pray that uh, let your light shine from us lord jesus that is all we asking for lord god let your light shines from us lord god let others see how beautiful you are and how great you are father in our lives jesus Lord, we thank you for all the miracles, for all the answered prayers, uh, for the, 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 the prayers that you're going to answer. Father, we just want to thank you, Lord, for all the blessings in our life, Father God. We thank you, Lord, for all the healings, Jesus, in our life, Father God. Lord, as we receive all this, Father as we receive all this Jesus, Lord, we pray that we will always be reminded, Father God, to walk in your light jesus and to do your real father we thank you lord we thank you jesus lord this morning as there are children of yours that is that has yet to believe that has yet to take up on this uh, challenge of yours father we continue to pray holy spirit that you will guide them hallelujah that you will bring them to the path that you have prepared for them lord father god you touch their lives jesus you open their eyes father god to see and to see your light lord father Father God, we thank you, Lord. We thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. You got you, you bless us, Lord, this morning, Father God, as we go from here, Jesus, for the rest of the week, Father God. Hallelujah. Our works, our lives, our schools, our, our careers, Father. You bless it, Lord, Father God. We thank you, Lord, for your provisions and your protection, Father. Hallelujah. We thank you, Lord. We thank you, Jesus, and we thank you, Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. We love you, Lord God. In Jesus' mighty name, we ask and we pray. Amen. Amen. God bless you, church. God bless you. Go today. Go out today and be God's light. Amen.